My name is Ben Paul. I work for OPST and I've been playing around more and more with composite loops for trout flies. Usually we associate composite loops with steelhead, but by just um, shrinking them down, you use the same technique. Slightly different materials, you can get some really cool effects for things like soft tackles and micro intruders and, and uh, even for salt water for stuff like shrimp patterns. But today I'm going to be tying a composite caddis. Um, it's, a, it's a soft tackle fly and there's a couple advantages to tying this way. One is that the problem with soft tackle feathers is that the consistency, you got some small ones here and then there's, they get bigger you know, as you go down and if you want to tie all size 14s or something it's hard to get consistency. The other, they're just hard to tie with because they're so short. You have to wrap that and it, it's pretty tough and they also break. So. We solve some of those, or all of those problems by using a composite loop, which is a combination of multiple materials into one dubbing loop. And we're going to actually use the longer tips of some feathers, the Lady Amherst feather that we can't wrap. This is a big thick stem, we can't wrap this, but we can cut off the tips and put them in a composite loop and make a pretty cool effect on the fly. So uh, I would say it most closely resembles a caddis, but it's sort of a general uh, trout fly. These have been becoming a lot more popular, I would say, over the last few years, 10 years or so, because I think some guys are, are kind of tired of staring at an indicator all day. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but this is sort of a nice change up if you just want to get into the rhythm of casting and stringing, and it's also really fun to have a tight line grab. So we'll get into this fly. It's pretty small. It's a size 14. It's tied on a, on a strong size 14 nymph hook, so it should be able to hold pretty good size fish. I'm going to debarb it uh, beforehand. I don't like ripping barbed hooks out of trout mouths. And the thread I'm using is 6 aught Vivas. Uh, I find this is plenty strong enough to do composite loops, small composite loops, both on a simple trout fly like this and even on a larger but still small uh, micro intruder. Start the thread towards the back. I'm going to tie in a, a mono rib with 10 aught mono thread. And this will just hold the body together a little bit so the fly doesn't end up just being one big shroud of dubbing. I want there to be a you know, a, a, a uh, separation between the abdomen and the thorax. And for the for the abdomen, I'm going to use <clears throat> I'm going to wax the thread first. And the abdomen, I'm going to use shrimp pink uh, UV shrimp pink ice dub. I'm going to make this as fine as I can, only using a little bit, just as much as will fit on the tip of my finger. I'll separate it out a little bit so I can sort of lengthen it along the thread, and then just a standard dubbing twisting it with my fingers. And I don't dub a lot of dry flies really, but one thing I do to make my body slim is I do maybe one wrap and then I'll pull the rest down and spin it again and then I'll do it again and just trap that, those fibers so I can really pull on them and make it a fine body. We don't want it to be, this is a pretty small bug, we don't want the body to be too fat. Wrap it forward, and I'm going to leave myself plenty of room. One more wrap here, a little bit too much dubbing. I want to give myself room for my composite loop. Composite loop's going to take up some space. <clears throat> then I'm just going to wrap the rib forward, probably do six or seven. Mono rib is nice because you can't see it, so if you don't want the fly to be too loud with a wire rib or some flashy rib, you just use mono, but it's also very strong. Cut that off and I'm going to go back over some of the dubbing, give myself a little bit more room. Okay, now comes the meat of the fly, and I found that the key for me to, to tying these um, small composite loop flies is sculpin wool, and the reason for that is you can cut the fibers to pretty much exactly the length you want. It comes off in, you know, these in this corded or hanked, whatever you want to call it, formation where all the the ends are even. And so I can just make a tiny. I'll cut off some of this excess here, and then I'm just going to make a really short, probably like I don't know, an eighth of an inch length and those fibers are pretty much all the same length unlike if I were to take something like ice dub which is harder to get harder to make so small even though it's a good material I'm just gonna spread these out these fibers out with my fingers here as 
much as I can, get them even. Doesn't have to be exact. And overall, I'm going to make this loop probably about an inch, or half an inch long. Maybe do just a little bit more there. Just a half inch, and all those fibers are nice and short. You'll see that this stuff is really nice and stiff too, which allows the other materials to sort of, you know, stick out and be themselves. But that's another advantage to this pattern over traditional soft tackle, is that it's more, um, you get more resistance to the current and more body. I'm going to take a bit of Predator Wrap. <clears throat> this is uh, UV clear barred. These fibers are going to be a little long, so I'll trim some of them. And I'm just going to lay these, it's about 10 fibers or so. I'm going to lay these just over the sculpin wool. This is probably the hardest part, is getting them sort of spread out somewhat evenly. Doesn't need to be exact, you know, at the end of the day this is this is a soft hackle. It's imitating a caddis pupa most closely and you know it's sort of an inexact science. So there's my predator wrap and then I'm going to use Lady Amherst and this is a, f I don't know why I'm shaking so much, Lady Amherst is a, Too a, much coffee. a yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lady Amherst is a, a feather that you really couldn't wrap, I mean it's way too long and also this it's got this big thick stem here but we can still put it in a soft tackle by using a composite loop. So I'm going to cut off just the tips. I'm going to brush them a little bit. This is really important when you're using the base of the feather because the fibers tend to stick together. I could probably get away with not doing it, but I'm going to do it anyway just to illustrate that point. And then I'm going to take an equal number of strands of this as I took this the predator wrap. About how long? This is about, these are about a half an inch. You're going to leave some butts in there, so you want to make them longer than you really want them to be. And we can trim them later if necessary. I'm just going to lay them out, and that didn't really, they kind of stuck together. So I'll try again. And again, this doesn't really have to be exact. Just stray one over here. I'm going to do a couple more, a couple more of these <clears throat> Lady Amherst tips. Quite a few more really. We can trim, it's, it's better to go there on the side of too many. There are these ones separated nicely and I can, so there you go, they're relatively even and I can live with that. My longest fibers are about a half an inch. And the, the Amherst I'm putting you know, the long, the, the black line here is represents the thread, and I want the the long ends to be about 80% on the left and 20% on the right. It's hard to get that exact, but for the synthetic predator wrap, it's 50/50 because they don't have any taper. I don't want the butts to all stick out. The final thing I'm going to do for this loop is just to add a little bit of glow, as I'm going to put UV light gray ice dub. I really like this color. It's one of my favorite colors, Ice Dub. And just sort of a veil. I'm just going to lay it over as an accent. A lot of times we put Ice Dub on as, in, um, as the, the base of the composite loop, but this, in this case I'm just going to use it as a as kind of a veil. And that's a little bit um, more than I sometimes use. But And then I'm just going to lay... You know what, I don't, with, with that much ice dub, I don't even need to put another uh, layer of sculpin wool on top. Um, when we're using, tying big composite loops, you need to put another layer to, just to hold everything together, but this one's not going to be difficult to keep together because it's so small and there's plenty of material there. So I'm just going to load this entire loop into a dubbing loop. This entire line of material is into a dubbing loop here. Make a short little dubbing loop, just a little bit longer. Well, quite a bit longer, but still short. Um, longer than the materials. And bring my thread to the front. If you make your dubbing loop too long, it, it won't spin as effectively. And I'm going to wax it. To help those materials stay put. And I'm going to bring all this up. 
and load it right in just as it was with a thread replacing that black line and at this point as long as you keep tension with your left hand here or your non-dominant hand you can kind of manipulate materials and even try to poke them a little bit straighten them length them so now I have a nice short pretty short butts here that's the hard part about doing this with feathers just keeping the butts in check this is another opportunity to trim but we can do that again after we spin so I'm going to spin with my OPSC dubbing spinner here a really nice heavy dubbing spinner that just keeps going and going and I'm going to go once more I'm going to do with six out I try to keep it to two good spins and if this thread breaks we're going to cut and do another fly but I don't think it's going to so now we can we can cut any materials that we think are too long a couple strands of predator wrap again it doesn't have to be a perfect fly for it to work a lot of the best soft tackles are kind of sloppy but that one's looking pretty good <clears throat> so another really key point here is to brush this out on bigger loops we pick and then brush but on a small loop like this we can just brush it make sure all there's not too many trap materials and this one I think is going to turn out pretty good now I'm going to wet wet the fly and this will compact all the materials and make it a lot easier to to occupy the space which isn't all that great and you see that sculpin wool has quite a bit of body and is sort of popping back to life if I put another layer of sculpin wool it will be popping a lot more but it looks quite I think it looks pretty good here so now that it's really I've created a hackle you know on a it's it's got direction you can, it's easy to wrap and it's got feathers it looks like a, an actual natural hackle I'm going to start wrapping this forward palmering as I go can make sure those butts lay back those butts in, in the interior of your composite loop will add some some stability and help that the loop resist the current which in turn helps your longer materials move better and this is a little bit more I'm gonna move this back with my thumbnail here could have left a little bit more space but it's gonna be fine and I'm just gonna do two wraps to get rid of this loop and with dry flies and small trout flies every wrap counts <coughs> this isn't that small of a fly but still and the final thing I'm gonna do you can see it's coming together pretty nicely the final thing I'm gonna do is add two antennae antennae however you say it of orange lady amorous and one of the key features of a caddis pupa is the antenna that stick out the back you'll see it represented in most or in many caddis pupa patterns just select two fibers here it doesn't matter too much and I'm going to try to tie them with the curvature going back they have you know they're they have a way that they that they stick out I'm going to put two and try to put two of them in at the same time and I want them to be longer than the other fibers so that they're noticeable and I can definitely live with that so I'm going to put one more wrap and cut them off that's awesome okay so looks pretty good I'm just going to go ahead and whip finish I think that'll do. And this one could have been, you know, I I could have put, again, I could have put that other layer of sculpin wool on. I didn't really think it was necessary because I had plenty of uh, ice dub, but it's 
you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this one. You can do a little bit more trimming of the predator wrap. And you know, obviously you could have put any number of different feathers in here. We could have even taken a real soft tackle and laid those fibers down and put them in a loop um, just to get more control and to avoid the risk of breaking the, f the feather. And that's a good way to use some of the longer soft tackles that you can't wrap. I mean, I just used Lady Amherst, which is longer than any soft tackle, so. Great. So that's a pretty easy composite soft tackle that catches fish.